There are seven kitchen dangers that are included in every meal that you cook, but how you outsmart them or avoid them is really the key to being truly safe in the kitchen. We'll talk about the seven main kitchen dangers today on the Carefree Cooks Code. I'm Chef Todd Moore, and this is the Carefree Cooks Code, every Tuesday live at noon Eastern. Here's our challenge. How can home cooks cook freely with creativity, confidence, and pride while ignoring recipes and still impressing themselves and others with what they cook? Well, the answer is found in becoming empowered with how cooking works, using dependable and repeatable methods of cooking that work for any ingredient, for any diet, and any desire, just like chefs do. And we'll know we've cracked it when everyone sees cooking as an exciting and rewarding way to improve their relationships, their lifestyles, and their health through better food and cooking. This is the Carefree Cooks Code. Hey, welcome back to the Carefree Cooks Code, everyone. This is the weekly show for the methods, the techniques, the insights, concepts into better food and cooking. We're live every Tuesday at noon Eastern. And if you're looking for past videos, go to the archive on facebook.com slash chef.todd.more slash videos. Check out the new artwork. <laughs> the, the, am I wearing pants? Yeah. Ooh. Whew, that, I'm wearing pants in that one. A lot of times, uh, the, uh, <laughs> the artwork uh, and the old schedule. That That's kind of a new schedule, let me explain. Tuesdays, we're still together. Tuesdays at noon, just like now. Carefree Cooks Code, I just explained that. And we're still going to be together uh, through the winter on Thursdays at 6 p.m. Eastern. But I'm going to try something new this week, this coming Thursday, and for a few weeks after, see if it sticks. So instead of the casual cooking events that we've been doing and the casual outdoor cooking events that we've been doing, I'm going to do something I call a casual chatting event with, with live chat. Okay, here's the thing. Let me try and explain this. <clears throat> I've cooked everything. <laughs> okay, <laughs> there's nothing left. I've broken the internet. I have cooked every bit of food that I could. No, that's of course not true. That that will never that will never end. I invented something new just the other night. Um, but I do have a tremendous library of things that I have cooked. And these casual cooking events they started in what Mar late March of 2020 when everything started to shut down. And I said, I'm going to be here for you. I'm going to be here to support you. The people that used to go to restaurants all the time, they're now stuck at home cooking their own food. They might not know what to do. So I was live four days a week helping people go through things, cooking, trying to replace a lot of your takeout foods that you craved. We did pizzas. We did Chinese food. We did Indian food. We did this whole thing that turned into a program, the Dinner Done program eventually. But you know, through all these lives that I'm doing, there is always one thing missing. And when we started that a uh, hundred and something episodes ago, I tried to do the comments. Like I would cook a little bit and then I'd go over to the computer and it always looked like this. Um, Sally says, uh, you know, and it just, it ruins the whole thing. But I hate the fact that I can't answer your questions. So last winter, we cooked up a storm. I demonstrated everything I knew. This time, I'm going to try and play some of those videos and be there live so that I actually can interact. Do you like that idea? Is that a, is that a good idea <laughs> or not? So the video was probably broadcast before. It's either going to be a public video or I might pull something out of any of, of all my courses. Um, but it's going to be pre-recorded in that I cooked it. But I'll be there live to introduce it, talk about it, actually be able to be on the chat and answer your questions and stuff. So that starts this Thursday. We're calling it a chat along I hope it works. I'm, I'm trying to bring you what you need. And, and I've done a lot of presentation. There are a lot of videos, but I think what you need is more of a one-on-one, -on -one, right? You need, you need me to answer your question and I want to be there to answer your question. So that's the way it goes. Why? Because we're carefree cooks. <laughs> we create our own recipes. We bring friends and family together, learning every time we cook, creating our own cooking styles. And to do that, all you got to do is practice some pro methods and you wind up loving your cooking. But look, you are not going to love your cooking if it injures you <laughs> or someone else in some way. Nobody likes cooking that hurts them. And the kitchen can be a dangerous place. 
But let's not use this as an excuse to keep us from progressing our own carefree cooking journeys. There, there's a lot of dangerous stuff in everyday life, you know, and working your way around it, working your way over it, through it, thinking a new way is the best way to get to a rewarding destination. Otherwise you get hit by a bus every day, right? That would be bad. You've figured out how to avoid the buses. But there are other dangers in day-to-day -day life, in the kitchen especially, and we all have to face these dangers head on and figure out what to do with them. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. First, I've got a true or false for you. Tell me in the comments section below, one word, true or false. No Googled explanations, don't Wikipedia it. <laughs> it's probably not there. Is this statement true or false? You cannot make stock from cooked bones. True or false? In the comment section below, I'll give you the answer at the end. Okay, so look, here we are together again, all us carefree cooks, the home of the recipe free, all over the world, we join together every Tuesday. This is episode number 178. <laughs> 178 of the Carefree Cooks Code. We have examined food and cooking from just about every angle I can think of. As I mentioned before, I've cooked it all. Uh, no, again, only kidding. 52 weeks a year, 178 episodes. This is about three and a half years, right, of new and exciting things that I've shown you and new and exciting things I'm going to show you. There is even more in the coming weeks. I am so determined to help everyone that is cooking inside. Now, th this has become such an obsession with me, I can't even tell you. So the, the, the Carefree Cooks Code on Tuesday, it's not a physical demonstration show. It's a, think of it as a cooking mental exercise show, because if I can get you thinking the way that I think, then your cooking is gonna improve, for sure. You wanna cook like Chef Todd, Hey, you need to think like Chef Todd a little bit. When it comes to cooking, the dark stuff you don't need. It's the concepts on Tuesdays, the insights, the techniques. I say it every week, the things that are going to make your cooking better once you do get in the kitchen. That's why this show is so important. And it's why I keep doing it. 179 episodes next week, I'll be here. Week after week, I'm writing, I'm producing shows that I know have the information that you need to be a better and safer home cook. But I want to know even more about you. I, 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 need, I need to know what your frustrations are and how I can help. This is what we're gonna do this winter. So if you ever wanna message me, you ever wanna comment on any lives, comment below. I'd love to hear what you really, 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 really want out of your time in the kitchen because this is my mission. This is my calling and I'm, I'm doubling down on it. We're, we're going to do it this winter. Okay. I want to help people because I, this all started in August of 2008 when I bought a video camera. Heather told me, hey, there's this guy named Gary Vaynerchuk who's doing wine reviews. And I thought Gary Vaynerchuk was terrible. I, I'm totally unwatchable, but the guy's huge now. But I did say, Heck, I can do that. So since August of 2008, I've posted more than a thousand. I just stopped cooking, uh, counting at a thousand. More than a thousand cooking videos all over the internet. I created an online cooking school that has changed the lives of thousands of home cooks everywhere. I've written hundreds of essays and blogs about carefree cooking. I answer dozens of cooking questions every day. It consumes me. Why do I keep doing this? It's simple. I'm obsessed. Look, there's a guy that looks obsessed, right? I want you to cook your own food at home. That's it. And I want you to enjoy the process too. I want you to cook your own food at home and I want you to enjoy doing it. So that, that's really two things. That's not one thing. And I want you to cook at home, love what you're doing it, but I also want you to be safe. Okay, so cook your own food at home, love doing it and be safe while you do it. All right, so now I know that's three things. Cook at home, enjoy the process, be safe, and, and, and express your creativity. I want that too. I want you to use the dependable methods of cooking with the ingredients that are appropriate for your diet or your desires so that, uh, all right, let's just stop at three. 
<laughs> okay? I could go on about all the things I want for you, but let's stop at three. I want you to cook at home, enjoy the process, and be safe. And I've talked a lot about the process of cooking online, in videos, in my online programs since 2008. 13 years this is going on. But I don't spend a lot of time on safety. It's not a sexy topic. <laughs> Having worked in some really big kitchens with dozens of chefs at the same time, all walking around with knives and stuff like that, having taught culinary college students and home cooks alike, I could tell you that there are seven main kitchen dangers that can jump up and bite you if you're not aware of them. But once you are aware of these dangers, then you just sidestep them every time because then you're cooking. You're enjoying it, and you're being safe. And that's really all I want for now. I know, let's leave it there. That's really all I want for now. So look, there are seven kitchen dangers and how you can avoid them. Here they are. Let's talk about it uh, for a little bit. The first one it has to do with the heat. The heat, the fire, the burns, you know? This is the leading cause of children being shooed out of the kitchen when they were young and then telling me about it when they're adults, why they can't cook, because mom always told them that it was a very dangerous place. You're gonna get burned. You look out, the, the stove is hot, don't touch the stove. And actually cooking is the leading cause of home fires, you know? So I'll tell you one thing you don't do, how to overcome this, don't ever walk away from your cooking. There is no time that you can go, oh, it's just simmering. Oh, it's just, if it's on the stove top, especially, do not walk away from it. Granted, you're braising something for five hours, you can't sit there and stare into the oven, but don't walk away from your cooking, especially direct heat cooking, especially dry, direct cooking, broiling, uh, indirect is roasting, sauteing, grilling, things you don't wanna walk away from. Steaming, poaching, Roasting and braising, you do have some time. Uh, keep flammable, flammable, <laughs> flammable things. Keep flammable things away from the stove. Did you see my cookbook uh, what, two weeks ago when I, I finally divulged uh, the secret formula for my New York Attitude bourbon barbecue sauce? The book was burned because I always put it down on the stove. Don't put paper on the stove. Don't put dish towels on the stove. Don't put things that can melt. Those things should be to the side of the stove, on a plate, on a pan, something that's gonna have keep you those seeds. What did I, what word did I wake up? Fla flammable. Uh, keep the stove top and the burners clean. It's important if you have an electric stove, you could take those elements right out. Clean the things that fall down underneath because that's the thing that becomes a fire. And also keep loose fitting clothing away. If you're gonna cook, if you're gonna saute, especially high heat saute, if you're gonna do some kind of stir fry, Roll those sleeves up, short sleeves. Don't have pajamas uh, dangling over the fire, things like that. Pull your hair back. Uh, maybe don't use hairspray that day. Hairspray goes up. I've seen people's hair go up from hairspray, things like that. Be aware when you're cooking at home in the same way that we are in the commercial kitchen. All right, uh, heat burns, but there's also food burns and steam is the most common burn. So be very careful, don't ever reach over one pot to get to another pot. You move one, pull the other one up, whatever you have to do, don't reach your hands over simmering liquid. Always turn pot handles toward the side, into the stove, or into the counter or to the back of the stove. Uh, when I, I used to teach in culinary school, this was the thing that drove me mad, uh, mostly because I had six or eight students on four or five stoves side to side, but I would have to walk along and push all the handles in. If you have a pan handle sticking out the side of the stove, very easy to catch it with your elbow, catch it with your hip, lean on it, have it tilt toward you that way. All pot handles toward the side or in. Always use dry pot holders or towels. Don't ever use a wet towel. I've seen people get terrible steam burns because they, they grab a towel that's got some moisture on it, grab a pan that's very hot, instant steam onto your hands, never a wet towel. Keep in mind that if you're doing any kind of pureeing and this is the season for nice pureed soups, I've seen tons of them in our Carefree Cooks community, uh, don't ever uh, 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 
put a lid on a blender that is unvented and turn uh, the blender on a hot soup. Uh, hot foods in a blender can explode. They need to be slightly vented or cooled first. Keep li liquid away from hot oil. Um, don't, you know, in our nine steps in basic saute method, uh, pan, uh, step one is pan hot. And the way you test the pan is with a little bit of liquid on your hand psh, and the liquid evaporates. If there is still liquid in the pan, do not then add your oil. The combination of liquid and oil will splatter. I've seen people get face burns from splattered oil. Similarly, keep ice away from any kind of hot oil. Oh my goodness. When ice goes from solid to uh, a gas in like one step, because you dropped an ice cube in hot oil or French fries that still have some ice crystals on them or frozen vegetables that you're adding to your high heat stir fry, that's gonna make your oil splatter, explode. If it's not a danger to you, it's a mess to clean up. So make sure of that. Uh, keep in mind that your mouth burns at 110 degrees Fahrenheit or 45 degrees Celsius. This doesn't seem very hot to the touch. It's not very hot if you just hover your hand over a simmering pot, but I'll tell you what, it'll burn the skin off the roof of your mouth. So your fingers, a lot tougher than your palate when it comes to tasting things. Make sure things are cool when you taste them as well. Uh, pasta. You're making penne pasta. The, the tubes, you pull it right out of the boiling water and bite it, there could be boiling water in there. Rinse the pasta under cold water before you taste things. The number one the number one uh, uh, hazard in a commercial kitchen is slip and fall. There are more slip and fall accidents than there are burns and cuts. And this is one of the reasons I used to buy shoes for my entire staff. If you worked with me when I was exec chef at a hospital, when I ran different business dining cafeterias, if you worked with me, you got two pairs of shoes a year uh, because that was, again, the number one thing is slip and fall. So clean up floor spills immediately. If you drip any kind of liquid on the floor, even in your home kitchen, that's when, if you're not wearing rubber soled shoes or some kind of non-slip shoe, that's when your foot hits the water, your foot goes out from under you, you're carrying a hot pan with liquid that then gets spilled on top of you. I've seen it happen. Uh, when I was a chef at the National Security Agency, huge production. We fed, we fed 15,000 people twice a day, 30,000 meals. So we all came together and a lot of times it was crunch time. We were in the weeds. We had to work really hard and we'd pull in some of the managers. Uh, my best friend at the time, Scotty, was one of the managers. He's in the kitchen helping out. I mean, he knows what to do. The guy knows his way around the kitchen, but he's dressed as a manager. He, he's got leather soled shoes on and we're doing roast beef, I think it was. He takes a roast out of the oven, like 10 pound roast. His feet hit some oil on the floor. Up he goes, hot oil from the roast on his shirt is one of the worst accidents that I've seen in the kitchen. So. Clean up your floor spills. Uh, yeah, I know you feel better when you give Fido a little bit of it. Keep your pets, especially those pesky cats, keep them out of the kitchen. You don't want to trip over them. Don't lift more than you can. If you need to scoop liquid first out of a very hot pot, you got five, three, two gallons of liquid or whatever it might be and you can't lift it, scoop it out. Or that pot should have a spigot on the bottom. Uh, don't reach for things that are higher than you can without a ladder. You should have a good kitchen step stool in your kitchen so that you're not trying to climb on top of counters to reach grandma's gravy boat, something like that. Um, look behind you before you move. If you have a tight kitchen, uh, I know we have a lot of carefree cooks that are in RVs, that are in third uh, wheels, um, or fifth wheels, they call it. It is, <laughs> third wheels, it is um, a, a cramped space. And especially in the commercial kitchen, one of the things that we always say is behind you, if somebody is chopping something on the line and you're gonna walk behind them, say behind you, because the person might stop chopping and turn with the knife and you walk into the knife. So behind, careful, behind, behind you. If you're gonna move with your knife or sharp objects to the sink, look first, move to the sink. Uh, you don't want to get stabbed, all right? Warn others, like I said, if you're behind them, careful, nice behind, not nice behind, that, that's totally different. Uh, 
be careful, I'm behind you kind of thing. All right, <laughs> knives and knife care. It's, it's a tough subject, ladies and gentlemen. Always use sharp knives. Everybody knows a duller knife is way more dangerous than a sharp knife. A dull knife you have to force, and that's when they slip. Use the right knife for the right job. Don't use your paring knife on something large. Don't use your large chef knife on something small. Don't try and open cans with them. Don't try and cut bricks. Uh, don't do the things that they show you on TV. You'll wind up hurting yourself. Never cut a frozen item. Oh my goodness, not only will you ruin your knife, but I've seen knives slip off the frozen item onto your hand and some bad cuts. Your frozen item can be defrosted in the microwave. It should have been planned ahead or it can be defrosted in the refrigerator overnight. Don't cut a frozen item. Use the tip fulcrum method and the Kung Fu grip. It's the safest way. It's what we teach in web cooking classes, all right? No random chopping, no mezzaluna with, with two hands on it, no laying your hand on top of the knife, no running your finger down the spine. Learn the right technique for using your knife and you'll be a lot safer. Uh, remember, a falling knife has no handle. Say it with me. A falling knife has no handle. That's right. If your knife is falling off the counter, it is 70 to 80% blade and 20 to 30% handle. If it begins to fall and you reflexively go to grab it, 80% chance you're going to grab the blade. Let it hit the ground. Throw your hands up. We actually practice this in culinary school. We go, hands up, throw your hands up, let the knife fall. You can always wash it. Speaking of which, don't ever leave, leave your knives in the sink, especially if it's a sudsy sink. Someone reaches down into the bottom to grab something and they find a sharp knife. Your knives are washed immediately and put away. They're never left in the sink. Speaking of which, wipe across the edge of the blade, not down it. If, if, if you're like me um, and you like to use your finger, and I just cannot seem to break this habit, use your finger to wipe the food off the blade. If this is the blade of my knife, don't wipe it along the cutting surface. That's how you cut things. Wipe your items down this way and you won't cut your finger. And dry your knife correctly on a towel. Towel on the counter, knife on the towel, towel on the knife, pull the knife out. That's the way to, uh, uh, to dry your knife. Don't ever test doneness of your knife with your finger. I've seen, I've seen culinary students, gee, is my knife sharp? Oh, my finger's bleeding. Um, and you know what the number one knife cut is? Cutting bagels. Cutting tough bread items like bagels. All right, we got to get going here. Wow. Uh, cutting boards. Uh, slipping cutting boards cause the most cuts. Make sure you have something under the cutting board, a wet towel, a, a rubber shelf liner, because you go down with your knife and the cutting board slips. Cutting boards at the wrong height are big problems for back and wrist injuries. Raise your cutting board if you have to. Put a box under it. We used to use a, a, a dishwashing machine rack for the taller students in culinary school. Rack on the table, a wet towel, cutting board on the rack. It got them another four or five inches. Uh, your pitted cutting boards. If your board starts to pit, if it's got grooves in it, you need to replace it. It can harbor bacteria. Wooden boards can splinter. It can get a foreign object in your food. They harbor bacteria as well. Remember the difference between clean and sanitary. Clean, obvious dirt removed. Sanitary, microbiologically clean. <laughs> Be careful of cross-contamination. Have separate cutting boards for your raw meats and items, things that are potentially hazardous, hazardous, and your cooked and your vegetables. And don't forget your cutting board can really dull your knife. So the wrong cutting board on the wrong knife makes a dull knife and that makes more danger. Let's talk about the no seams for a minute. No seams, this bacteria, they come from dirty sponges, right? The no seams. Uh, so make sure that you change sponges or, or dish towels, whatever you're using to wash your utensils. Have a sanitizing solution nearby. Just a few drops of bleach in a full quart spray bottle is enough to sanitize things. Make sure your refrigerator is at its correct temperature or you could be using contaminated food. 40 degrees Fahrenheit, 40 degrees Celsius. Make sure you're cooking things to the correct temperature. 165 Fahrenheit, 74 Celsius. Beware of cross-contamination. Cutting a raw item with a knife 
that you then use on a cooked item. Using a marinade on raw items, cooking the item, putting it back in the raw marinade, things like that, cross-contamination. And the number one way that you can help prevent foodborne illness is by washing your hands. 66% of all foodborne illness cases come from lack of hand washing. All right, we're almost there. Number seven in the seven dangers is simply unsafe cooking practices. Uh, always pour hot items away from you. I, I poach a lot of crabs here, okay? Got a crab trap in the backyard. I pull an average of two to three a day, eh, maybe one to two a day. And then they get poached in a big stock pot. Well, when that's done, if I grab the handles like this, I can't pour away from me. I can only pour toward me. And then the steam comes under your chin. So I always grab heavy pot handles overhand like this, so then I can pour the hot liquid away from me and it doesn't get under my chin. How you grip those pots is very important. Uh, don't put hot pasta in your mouth, <laughs> like I mentioned before. Uh, rinse it under cold water so you don't burn your mouth. Uh, don't drop uh, hot casseroles. Oh, be careful with your casserole dish. Yeah, that's what I meant. So uh, this has been a big problem. Don't forget glass retains heat. Uh, better than anything just about. And that casserole dish is gonna stay hot for a long time. I've seen people take their oven mitts that are old, you know, it's kind of worn away, the fingers are worn away. Get yourself new oven mitts and then a wet towel and they get like this, ah, tsh, there goes the casserole, right? Uh, anytime you open the oven, stand back. Don't immediately open the oven and stick your head in there. Open the oven, two, three, four, let that heat out first, otherwise you're gonna roast your nose hairs, I think. Uh, take the lid off the pan and stand back. Anything that's simmering on your stove, similarly, don't take the lid off and go, hey, what's going on under there? Take the lid, let the steam take place. Be very patient in your cooking, and that brings up the correct way to smell things. You've seen me do this. Don't ever put your head over a simmering pot of liquid. You're gonna get tomato sauce in your eye, you know? Not that kind of thing. You pull, pull the smell toward you, your hand over the pot, and you can pull the smell toward you, the safest way to smell things. Look, if you wanna be confident and creative in the kitchen, it doesn't include being injured. You're not gonna love your cooking if you get injured when you do it, or if it injures the ones that you love. Safe cooking is, is so much better than unsafe cooking. Trust me, <laughs> it is. So I know all of us carefree cooks, we're all having a blast in the kitchen. We're whipping up this and that. We're gathering all those compliments for our great original dishes. We're proud of what we cook. And that's maybe all we ever really wanted, right? Just those five things that I wanted for you. I just want you to cook your own food at home, enjoy the process. And while <laughs> you're aware of your surroundings, Watching everything that's going on, you're making the safest decisions during the process as well. Cook your own food at home, enjoy the process, and do it safely. Yeah, Because look, we all got dangers, right? We have tons of dangers to be aware of in our everyday lives. And nowadays, just breathing the wrong air can be dangerous as well. But I don't want dangers to paralyze you. Be safe. Listen to what experts tell you to. Not a medical expert, but there's always danger around you. But if you minimize it, you might not eliminate the dangers, but you can minimize, you can avoid when you're aware of their presence and you have a plan to get around them. There are things you can do to get around the dangers, to avoid the dangers. There are things people are telling you to do to avoid the dangers. Do it. The dangers are still there, they just won't affect you. You're not gonna eliminate the dangers, but you can become the one that is not a victim of them. So you can enjoy your kitchen. You can have fun. You can have that artistic expression, the problem solving that goes into inventing a new recipe, right? And the pride in creating something for yourself or someone else or someone you love. You can enjoy all these things, but please be safe while you're doing it or it won't be enjoyable at all. Uh, back to the true or false for today. Uh, the statement is 
False. Yes, you can make stock with cooked bones. As a matter of fact, if you're going to make a beef stock, you have to caramelize the have have to not have to. You have to. I get so excited. Uh, you have to caramelize the bones first. So now here's the thing. We have a picture of chicken bones here. A chicken is generally a white stock because of the collagen in the bones. So collagen cooked under moisture turns into gelatin. And that's where you want that jiggly uh, uh, chicken stock or turkey stock or so on. So uncooked bones have the most gelatin, uh, have the most uh, collagen that will turn into gelatin. Cooked bones, you will lower that jiggly uh, uh, quality of your stock, but you'll get the flavor of caramelized bones. So yes, you can make a stock. The statement is false. Look, if you know someone who needs to protect themselves from the seven dangers that are involved in every meal they cook, please like, love, share this video so they can be proud of what they cook and they can be safe while they're doing it. And if you really want to add some excitement and interest to your fall cooking, my new free online class, Fall Cooking is Cozy, three surprising ways to enrich your fall cooking that you might be missing is going to make it really easy for you. You'll see the three things that I do to change my cooking for the fall season and the flavors, flavor combinations that I start using as well. So if you're afraid of squash, uh, <laughs> if you're not changing your seasonings and your sauces for the season, then you might be out of step with fall. And don't worry, I don't mention pumpkin spice once. No pumpkin spice. Uh, so go to webcookingclasses.com slash cozy to find out when the next class is starting. And until next Tuesday, when we try to figure out another key to cracking the Carefree Cooks Code, this is Chef Todd Moore reminding you that there's a method to your safe cooking success. Bye, everyone.